Hello my dear Aries, this is your love and spirituality reading for the time between November 1st and November 15, 2017 with me Queen of Cups Tarot. So I use the Spellcasters Tarot with Melanie Marquise and illustrated by Scott Murphy. And I will start shuffling your cards. So I call the Divine, uh, Ten of Swords and Page of Swords in the... Uh, bottom here so someone might have seen an ugly truth so I call the divine with love and light um, children here or very immature person or you're very close to somebody's core with love and light and I call the four archangels in the four corners of the world word <laughs> world yes <laughs> and I call the six elements earth wind fire water spirit and ether to join us here today and to give us a clear view reading for my dear aries viewers so i want my dear aries to have love in their lives and to find themselves in loving relationships i also want you to have creative success and to be able to walk on your highest path towards your highest destiny so, my dear Aries, I also want to take the chance to tell you that uh, we will have uh, the next full moon in uh, Taurus uh, on November 4. We also have the sun moving out of Libra, the 22nd of October, moving into Scorpio. Mars and Venus is in Libra after their kiss in Virgo on the 10th of October. Uh, Chariot. <laughs> okay, someone might be coming or going. Uh, Venus is leaving Mars behind. Uh, moving into Scorpio, November 8th, Jupiter and Venus is conjunct on the 13th of November in Scorpio. Jupiter moved over to Scorpio the 11th of October. We will have the new moon in Scorpio, November 18th. Um, okay, Mercury moves from Scorpio to Sagittarius the 5th of November. And Sun moves from Scorpio to Sagittarius on November 22nd. Uh, so... Uh, Saturn is moving direct in Sagittarius and we will have a conjunction uh, of Saturn and Mercury on the 28th of November. Pluto is moving direct in Capricorn, Neptune is moving retrograde in Pisces and will station November 23rd and move direct again on November 24th. Uranus is moving retrograde in your sign, uh, Aries. Okay, so I will just tune in for a few seconds. So, my dear Aries, the bell that you heard in the beginning, it's, um, it's a bell that cleans the energy in the room for your reading. Uh, so, uh, this is your, your future. Uh, this is your now and, and this is the past. So, the past is uh, probably October. Uh, the now is uh, probably the first half of November 2017. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the future here is uh, second half of November going into December. Uh, so you can watch this reading several times during the period, having a forecast, uh, also being able to get advice when you're in the midst of it and maybe going back and have some conclusion, uh, getting the experience from uh, this uh, event. And here we have... Uh, a beautiful ace of cups so someone might have offered you their heart or you might have uh, been able to connect to your own heart or offer it to someone ace of cups it's uh, it's a new beginning within love uh, so it's a very beautiful card and it's also uh, your antenna this is where you feel all your your feelings and being able to communicate uh, wide and far <laughs> through dimensions, through distance, through time. Uh, so uh, it might be a very vibrant, brighting love connection with with someone or just self-love. Um, it's also a very fertile card, Ace of Cups. Uh, the next card is the Hermit. So... Uh, Ace of Cups here in this uh, probably means self-love. It means that you have found like a source deep within you of self-love and you did so in your past and you were able to um, to kind of be alone and still be uh, uh, feeling totally loved and, and, and safe. Uh, 
uh, with the hermit card it's a certain kind of self-sufficientness and uh, it's like you're going on a spiritual path to getting to know your emotions to getting more in contact with them getting to know what they are really wants to tell you it's like you're learning the language of of love and emotional vibration uh, so this is very highly spiritual you're on a very highly spiritual road it might be that you are a little bit alone during this time even though you might feel the love connection with with other people or a certain person uh, but you need this time or you needed this time alone to to figure things out figure out also what's meaning something to you what's love is re really and and when you're really feeling love as well and here we have death uh, so death means that I think that many areas has been starting to let go of control you have been a very well organized people very effective very creative uh, but here it's um, it's a process of, of dying uh, it might be that you have um, uh, left, needed to sacrifice some great uh, love in your life it doesn't have to be a person it can be an occupation or like something that you love to do uh, and and you have been forced to to sacrifice it and I feel that you are okay with this it's a very very if you aren't <laughs> um, it's just you fighting your own spiritual growth uh, but this is kind of this what I have been nagging with you about dying before you die kind of let go of control you love things uh, and and that is fine you don't try to change that you don't try to you know stop loving someone uh, that um, is in your heart they are there you just accept whatever it is if pain is in your heart uh, you accept this if um, love is in your heart you accept this no matter the outside situation you just accept this usually when we kind of break up from someone and and go into a lonely state um, we want to get rid of that person and that feeling uh, so if you're still trying to do that um, uh, you're still not giving up of the control um, <clears throat> you should um, kind of let the, the energy be there of, of love even if the person doesn't deserve it it's still what you feel uh, you don't have to express it uh, you can just have it in your uh, uh, vast uh, um, uh, ocean of emotion inside of you. It's no uh, limitation of the space of love that you can share. Uh, so this is very deeply, deeply spiritual, but it might have been like a really uh, dark time for you emotionally. You might feel a little bit overwhelmed by the emotions and the things that you are asked to let go of. It might be things that have been very important for you. Also, your own uh, behaviors and attitude that has been important for you. Like they have given some kind of, maybe some kind of status or some kind of um, uh, feeling of security. And now you're letting all this go. It's like you're really doing a harvest in your life, letting go of all things that doesn't uh, longer give you uh, like... It doesn't longer give you what you intended from the start that you wanted from this situation. So it might be like um, anything, moving, um, uh, changing location, changing country, selling your house, uh, um, quitting your job. It might also be sheer exhaustion, but this sheer exhaustion is there for you to be able to uh, connect with your spiritual self uh, because as long as you fight and try to keep things together uh, you won't be able to connect with your soul self you kind of need to fall apart and then you find yourself <laughs> uh, so but it seems like you have your things together you kind of let go of control deliberately with the hermit there so it's it's a very highly spiritual path for many of you Aries uh, and here you see the eight of cups this continuation of the sacrifices of the things that doesn't work in your life the things that you you might have had as as fire signs you might be really creative and you know start new projects all the time meet new people um uh, organizing your home having always a new project but now uh, you're feeling the exhaustion hitting you uh, and you don't have the energy to share uh, and to do things that you formerly wanted to do so it's this also with uh, carpe diem you want to 
you want to really live every moment of the day to the fullest, but you don't have the energy to do this. So it's perfectly all right. You don't have to run around like uh, um, a mouse on fire uh, to live your life. You can just sit and be in stillness and still like living your life to the fullest. It's not about what you do. It's uh, who you are. Uh, and uh, your uh, uh, the only thing you really have is your own uh, conscious, like your own awareness, being awake. That's the only thing that you know is real. Like uh, I have a conscious <laughs> consciousness. Uh, I have um, that's all, all. And sometimes you lose also that when you, for example, fall in deep dreamless sleep or you get unconscious for some reason, uh, then you can be like nowhere. You don't have a uh, like a memory of where you were during this time. So then you also lo lost the only thing you had, your uh, your consciousness. So here with the Eight of Cups, you're kind of asked to let go of things that have given you like happiness before, or you had hope that they would give you happiness, but they actually became a draining burden for you. Uh, so, uh, and you're asked to let it go. It might be like you let it go for now and it will return later when you have gone through this very uh, dark uh, time in your life. It's, it feels very dark. It feels very sad, but it's it's very beautiful. And it's, it's the way that you walk to find uh, your soul. But here in real life, it, it will be you becoming like a little bit of a loner and cutting people from left to right. Uh, and it's just a big spring cleaning. It's a clean sweep. Uh, you don't. You want to live a, a more simple life, with less problems, less responsibility, uh, more being able to enjoy your life. So you, this clean sweep is here for a reason because you have gotten to know yourself and what's really. You have gotten to know your own emotions and, and now you're honoring them better and you want them to be in balance. So you're arranging your life in a way so they will be in balance. And it's very, it's moon in all those cards in different phases. So you're going to kind of the dark night uh, of the soul here. And here we have a three of wands. So when you are ready with this, uh, then you will have done this clean sweep and uh, you can live your, your new life. And your new, new life will probably be more focused on what you really love, what's really making you feel like happy at, and at ease. You won't force yourself to do things that you don't want to do. You will cancel those things. Three of Wands is very... It's it's not very big on compromises. You want what you want. This is your spiritual expression. Uh, you have a dream, okay? And this dream is very special and it's coming from your soul and it's not going to require you um, working yourself uh, to skin and bones, okay? This is not going to ask you to drain yourself. This is going to give equally much energy as it takes. Uh, so... Um, uh, it, you might be feeling like a little bit shaky, like you, you feel like you're doing something that might be like you're taking actions that might be very hard to reverse. Uh, so you might be scared that this sacrifices that you're going to regret it later. And it's fine if you will regret it later, because then this is what you feel. Uh, but this is really a clean sweep that's coming from your soul. So you don't have to worry. It's like very instinctual you're doing this um, together with the divine and um, it, it might feel very dark but it's actually coming from a place of, of light uh, so um, feel feel guarded like all eyes are on you you are doing something that your ancestors hasn't been able to do and now you're doing it and uh, and in in high honor uh, so um for some of you cross watching for Aries, Aries is in has been in a very uh, dark place, so it's better to leave them alone for for now, or even uh, at least here in the in the past, it was they needed this time alone. Three of Wands, it might be an opening for like uh, more social events, but then it will be on their terms. Uh, because they they still are a little bit shaky and and wobbly they they have done this big change and and they can't just throw themselves out there amongst people again uh so okay um 
this is um, in the now and we have uh, the chariot that came when I said we we're talking about Venus leaving Mars behind moving into Scorpio uh, so uh, definitely Venus has been leaving Mars behind <laughs> moving into Scorpio but here comes the Mars energy again and you can see the fire energy also with the horse here that's Sagittarius but the Ace of Cups is what's in the chariot. So now you are using the Mars energy on a more delicate way, not to run over your emotion, but to cherish your emotions, to cherish what's inside of you, not going against your own will and, and your deepest rooted self, but actually aligning with your deepest rooted self. Uh, so it looks very, very beautiful. And it's a little bit my way or the highway energy, but it's just because you're doing this clean sweep here <clears throat> in your life. So the next card for you is the hangman and it comes underneath the hermit. So it might indicate that the loan, like loaner period needs to be extended into also the now here. Uh, the hangman is connected to, uh, it's 12, so it's connected to three. The empress one plus two is three. Uh, so it might be like a pregnancy, but it's a pregnancy when it comes to spiritual growth. Uh, so it will take time before the new you will see the light of day. And um, for some of you, it will really be the dark night of the soul. You might feel like almost going crazy okay because your emotions will be a little bit overwhelming but it's just because you're learning this new language and uh, it might be um, like you need to use big letters first <laughs> before you can uh, write with small letters uh, so uh, your emotions are going to use big letters so it, it's just hanging like this and you see this everything here in this world is upside down the tree is actually this way but gravity is this way uh, so this is really the hangman situation your life is upside down when you're hanging upside down like this things are going to fall out from your pockets um, you're going to lose things that you don't no longer need so it's a big time of sacrifice with 12 the hangman 13 death and you're doing this alone, um, mostly because of the hermit. So it's a very spiritual journey. When you are to find yourself, there's not really a group activity. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, the next card here is the Nine of Cups. So everything this is coming because you have had a wish. You wished for something. Uh, maybe you wished for relief or you wished for like a... A partner that truly loves you or you wish for happiness or whatever it was and here comes the help okay this was has been happening here is the help you can't gain something this new vision of yours if you don't lose the old first um it's like this old burial scenes with in egypt and china where they kind of sacrificed all the goods from that person because they needed it in their next life so you need all the energy uh, from your past existence in your new life so you need to sacrifice it um it needs to step between the dimensions so it might be a very good time to uh, to spring clean uh, your, your house to to sell off things that's actually just a burden to you like putting too much responsibility doesn't make you happy you might have like bought a, a cottage somewhere and you were going to have it to enjoy but it has just been a lot of problems <laughs> and um, you might have uh, bought like a um, boat or something and to enjoy your life but it has also been a lot of problems so the, these kind of dreams um, that hasn't been really dreamy you are giving them up for now because you're freeing all this energy for a brand new start and it might be that what's made you happy or you what you believed would make you happy in the past is actually not going to make you happy in the future so it's a big sacrifice to gain something in the future that's more in tune with who you really are and what you really want uh, it's like the divine you have asked for something the divine is giving you what you need maybe not what you think that you need or what you have asked for um, it's sometimes like this and sometimes we get exactly what we ask for and that is not what we wanted it can be like this as well but the nine of cups is good you have this beautiful work together with the divine and everything is on its right place it's eight nine you sacrificed old to gain the new uh, and you also have the emperor here and emperor is of course Aries and this uh, emperor is very luscious he's very 
uh, shamanistic he's very in tune with nature uh, so this is a new way of ruling not being like a part of um, uh, a society that requires you to uh, to sacrifice your true self but you want to be a part of something where you can actually expand your true self and become your true self, like really being alive, not having to pretend to be half dead to uh, be able to endure the life you have chosen for yourself. So you can also see that it's burning here uh, to his past. So he's uh, sacrificing uh, the old for a new beginning. And it's also sitting with a tree here. You have a tree with a lot of the cards. So it's with this with the ancestors. We always have like a karma from our ancestors. Cellular memories of past hurt. Uh, so it's like your your um, also what they gained. Also what they have accomplished. You will also have those. Uh, so it's like a, a gratitude to the ancestors. And a work together with the ancestors, I think, to free yourself from past karma that's also theirs. Sometimes you can be like really, really irrational. Like you can be really, really afraid of um, um, like tight compartments or uh, like a person leaving or whatever. And and um, or or love, <laughs> like someone wants to be together with you. Ah, OK, so it can be a, a different scarce. And you don't know why you can't have you don't have a memory of you ever being like locked up in a tight compartment apartment or uh, that someone uh, you lost someone and it was so dreadful so you can either not see them walk out the door or uh, even have them in your life because it's so dangerous uh, so either it's a past life experience that you have or a, it can be a, a suppressed childhood memory as well but often it's actually your ancestors that had this problem uh, that they might have been locked in a tight compartment uh, sometimes maybe their parents locked them in the basement when they have been naughty or maybe they lost like people that they really loved mm? so uh, sometimes when you think you're really crazy because you have emotions that you can't really explain it's usually this kind of karma ancestral karma or past life karma uh, so don't um, don't be too alarmed with it just feel the feelings of it all and and give light and attention to it because then you will dissolve it it's like you being this um, black hole uh, sweeping over like the energy in your life and just digesting it and making it into light shooting it out like light on the other end taking in the darkness and shooting it out like light taking in the materia like all the things from this past life and your ancestors past life and just and this is just you doing this with your attention, with your light, your awareness, your consciousness, the only thing you have. And it's love. OK, so it's healing as well. It's healing. Uh, and here you have the judgment day. <laughs> OK, uh, so the judgment day. Yes, you're really going through a trial by fire here, but it's to waken up the real you, uh, the real spiritual uh, you. And it's you see here it's coming like. Uh, Arius the Emperor here and Three of Wands. So this is like <laughs> no compromises again, emphasizing this again. And, and the moon is here again. So uh, this is something uh, that you need to do uh, to become uh, like let your soul step into your own life. So you need to do this big clean and you need to become very decisive and like my way or the highway because you need to find out who you are and then you can start to compromise again but uh, with other souls but for right now you are uh, inviting your soul in your body so it's 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 your middle up in this process you can't really deal with uh, with other entities and their problem and it's trees here as well it's like a gateway a portal of of trees and uh, i think that you get great help from your um uh, from your ancestors in this process and also from spiritual guides and and uh, guardian angels and things like this so all eyes are on you right now uh, so here is the future for aries and we have a three of cups so three of cups is like being baptized uh, it's it's also very highly spiritual here. Um, you are you are aiming towards um, your true soul family, your true happiness. This is like being happy like a three year old, but it's it's still very serious because it's like having a lot of responsibility. You can't uh, go around 
uh, doing things that's harmful to yourself, it will have great consequences. Before you might be able to endure like having a um, difficult boss at work or a difficult girlfriend or something like that. But here in the future, you won't be able to tolerate that. You will become allergic to things that's not in tune with your higher being. Uh, and that means also people. Uh, like you will be able to just be with a certain uh, group of people that's um, coming from um, uh, your vibration. It's going to be like this for a while. It's like you're separating uh, like Eckhart Tolle says, from, from other people in your past, like oil and water. And you are going to uh, be like oil here and water there. So uh, so oil going to be with oil for a while and water is going to be with water for a while. And then we'll see. I don't know what will happen <laughs> next, but I guess we won't be compartmentalized like that forever. It's just we need to find ourselves, our true family, our true soul family, uh, the people that are our home. Uh, the next card is the Two of Cups. So Two of Cups is more in uh, a better invitation to other people. You have been in this hermit hangman state. But here is the Two of Cups. So here you are ready for love again or uh, love uh, relationship. And it might also be like a love relationship that you have actually sacrificed in the past. It doesn't have to be like that. But um, it might be because you have the Nine of Cups talking about like you have the relationship and the people you are supposed to be with and the Eight of Cups saying that you sacrifice them. <laughs> so they might return here. Uh, okay, so Three of Cups, Two of Cups. Um, it's, uh, it's the tree that's flanking here. The tree is the energy that goes back to the Empress. So this is the Divine Feminine honoring your body, your emotions, your physical needs. Um not compromising with who you are and you know trying to bend your head to fit in this is not happening uh, and the next card is the page of cups and i think we saw the page of cups in the beginning i'm i'm trying to figure out what cards it were i think i was a little bit scared first <laughs> with the cards that were i have forgotten but i remember this that i felt like okay there might be a little bit of a juvenile energy that needs to mature and we see here this is pure water and this is pure water and we have the hangman in between like a person needing to mature uh, so uh, either it's uh, um, areas that needs to mature or your counterpart or both uh, but anyway, there's a lot of water and love here, so it might come in a water person, uh, any um, person, but it might be like any other sign. Uh, see if you have, you have Scorpio here. Um, we have Sun going to move into uh, Scorpio the 22nd uh, of October, so uh, it might be going on there. And, um, and then we have Aries, that's you. And the chariot is Sagittarius and Cancer. So I don't see so much more like particular star signs. But it doesn't mean that they are not there. It's just that it's more aiming towards you. Uh, here you have uh, the hero font. And this is uh, Taurus. Um, uh, Taurus is one of the horned uh, signs as are you the emperor and capricorn uh, so once you had like the you once had the intellect uh, of nature mm -hmm. and here uh, this taurus energy has lost it in this card uh, because they sell sold themselves off uh, to um, to human mind you can see this is very controlled and well organized and this is kind of what you have left behind but I think this is a return to society that you uh, the purified you is returning to society and it's, it's still unchanged it hasn't changed uh, and this is masculine spiritual growth you can see this with eight of cups is feminine but emperor and hero font is very masculine here um, it's uh, usually Taurus, I think it's a feminine sign, but here it's it's masculine. It's the masculine spiritual growth. Uh, and you can see here also Hermit Nine, Nine of Cups, Hero Font, very spiritual growth. Uh, but it's like you have learned something and now you are supposed to teach others the same thing. People that might not know this, what you have learned, and that also needs to open their heart. Uh, so, um, it looks very prosperous, but okay, five of cups, so five, uh, five hero font, you will be very disappointed with people because they, it's like you have developed like with the quantum leap, uh, and they haven't, uh, okay, so they're still 
and making you sad but you're not going to compromise with this you're not going to sell yourself off even if um, you feel like okay so they still haven't grown and i need to do all the work if we are going to be friends but i think you're not uh, you're just going to let this be spilled then and it's up to other people to to catch up with you you can show them the way you can show them how to do it but uh, you're not going to enable them or be codependent with them uh, so for you cross watchers this might be areas being like this the person that's um uh, <clears throat> destructive and doesn't want to learn uh, it, it might be like this and it also for you Aries that watch but usually the people that watch Tor Toro is the one that are trying to grow and, and here you are meeting people that wants to stay like it has always been they are still in this energy and you have changed like all over but it's it's like an energy that's very young uh, I think we had both the page of cups and the page of swords uh, I think we had a ten of swords as well. I I don't remember, but uh, it's um, it's like you are a beginner in something, and the other one hasn't even begun to start working on this. So don't expect too much here in the beginning. Uh, so I will also take cards from you from the astrology reading cards with the Alison Custer Lambert. So we have those and I see if there's someone more who wants to pop out. Okay, a little too much, but it's all fine. Uh, so we have 12th house here. Uh, 12th house. Uh, <clears throat> this is the area of your life uh, that is overwhelming you. <laughs> uh, overwhelming. You yield uh, to a greater cause of power. Yes, okay. Uh, so things have been overwhelming. We can see this here uh, with the Hermit and Death and Eight of Cups and Hangman and all those things. So it's this dark night of the soul, but it's spiritual awakening. You can see this. And, and you have Libra. So I think the Hermit energy is much with Libra. And then we went over to Scorpio here. Uh, so Libra, <clears throat> this energy is diplomatic and gracious. It seeks harmony and balance in relationships. Uh, so it's like you doing the work first and you find your balance and then uh, you invite others to also find their balance and here you have uranus it's kind of the tower card your potential for sudden change enlightenment and awakening so with all this you have gone through this um, big change and enlightenment and awakening uh, and it's it's what have happened i don't know why this has happened to you but it's very lucky and also we have the second house your assets, finances, and the things that you value. This is Taurus. And here you actually have also Taurus. This energy around you shows abundance of nature. It is rich, earthy, and productive, yet relaxed and slow. And that is like the essence of Taurus. But it has sold itself off. Like when the nature wasn't like in the fashion anymore. But actually the mind was in fashion. Taurus is very loyal people. Wants to do good. So they, they sold their inner nature and, and became like, you know, fitting into the, with the other squares. Mm? Uh, so working very hard, uh, taking, like, uh, not listening really to your body, to your feelings, um, uh, selling yourself off because you want to gain something else, selling your soul uh, because you want to gain something else. And this is what you are going to encounter, or this is the next thing that you need to work with. Uh, but it seems like you have already given up so much. Um, but maybe it's more that you need to uh, like lose the attachment to worldly titles and piles of money and goods and glory and, and return to nature. OK, return to nature, make Taurus return to nature, uh, make Taurus become its true self again, return to body, return to emotions. And it seems to go through disappointment. So it's not going to be like an easy road um to to learn this or to learn the society this you have learned this yourself and then you need to teach this either if you're cross watcher maybe you need to teach an areas this <laughs> like getting away from this um uh, energy you want to be a part of society you want to do good but it's like the people has outgrown the society the society is like it's um standing for maybe 10 percent of uh, the population's true will and and many others has start to move on it's like uh, the population has higher moral values and standard than the leadership uh, sh uh, uh, like sh uh, how do you say this in english the leadership um, 
it's like a <laughs> place, you know, here we have the people and here the leadership uh, schikt is in Sweden, but oh, it's a schikt, okay. <laughs> so uh, those, those in leadership is of lef lesser moral value than the people that they are ruling. Mm? So here the people kind of needs to go, they first do this profound awakening in themselves and then they reshape society and it will be a little bit painful. Okay, you will be disappointed many times on society not awakening as fast as you would want them to. But it's how, it's what it is, okay. Uh, so, um, card, a card from Oracle of Visions by Cyril Marchetti for my dear Aries. Um, uh, yes, okay, diary, memories, childhood memories. Okay, it might be someone has to deal with their parents. <laughs> this can be tradition, culture, parents. So if you are changing and you are adapting like to a new uh, free world where everyone can be whatever they want, and, and then you are going to have to adapt, you're going to tell your parents. <laughs> so, oh, it's uh, not going to be, um, you're not going to feel supported okay to this new you but uh, it doesn't matter you don't need the support from the old the old is what you are uh, growing from uh, you don't need support from it to continue being yourself but it will be uh, maybe a little painful to not get like the people that you really love on board and, and to get like be able to help them to get this what you have also seen uh, so we can't control others and we can't uh, force, we can take a horse to the watering hole, but we can't force it to drink. We can't force to people to take our teachings or to feel our love or to see what we see, the vision we see. Uh, we can just try and, and fail and try again and fail again and try again and maybe be successful. Uh, try to not be too attached to this. You can't control this. You can't enlighten the world. Uh, when you enlighten yourself, when you do this work for yourself, you free yourself like this, it's going to spread like rings on water. And when there's enough people being enlightened, then everyone is going to be enlightened. It's just going to be a clean swoop, <laughs> like the energy is going to change. And this is something else. It's like with the hangman, everything being upside down. Alpha and Omega, <laughs> what's up is down, like it's going to just spread. So you don't have to feel anxious and trying to change things that's out of your control. Uh, you might feel like this um, amazing energy, you want to share it with others and then they won't get a thing and it's, it's all right, okay. Uh, so medicine wheel uh, for you. Uh, you are a healer. Your healing vibration is giving to others, Mother Earth and yourself. Your divine vibration sees only health and wellness surrounding everything. You have been chosen to walk this honorable route out of duty to do what is right in the universe without concern for your own well-being because you know it is the right path for you. Uh, so this might be like your intention, but you still need to remember that you are just a human and you can't change the world. It needs to, wants to change itself. And also it can be a good idea to not watch like horrible um, news and, you know, be in that energy. It will be very frustrating when you yourself has, has done this um, spiritual awakening. So try to... Try to separate a little bit from, from this sad energy and, and be more in this uh, healing energy, like in this energy. Uh, so um, the more you can be in this energy and feel your own balance and, and your own uh, like self-love and self-respect, the more you will affect this part of your life, like the people that can't understand you. Uh, because when you are just becoming a good example, eventually you will come in fashion and people will follow you. Okay, <laughs> so I hope this helped my dear Aquarius and I want you to take a really good care and I will uh, publish the next video in the beginning, beginning of November and that will be for mid-month November. So you're welcome back to check that out. Okay, bye bye.